Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. I am Martina Lilly and today we are doing a full face of Pat McGrath Labs. So hopefully that sounds interesting to you. Let's do the YouTube-y thing, subscribe, notification bell, hit that like button and let's get started. Since our mother Pat recently released her bronzers, I thought it would be a great time to do a new full face of Pat McGrath Labs. Now if you're new to my channel here, I am a avid Pat McGrath Labs lover, okay? I intensely love this brand. And so I have a full playlist. There's like 80 something videos in my Pat McGrath Labs playlist now, which is insane to me. And I've done like other full faces. I've done brand reviews. I've got so much Pat McGrath Labs content. So I'm gonna link my playlist down below for you guys if you want any further Pat content and you, and you like my little channel here. I do have a little caveat. I'm calling it a full face, but there are two products that I don't have from her collection right now. One is the primer. I have had the primer in the past, so check out my playlist if you want to see like that in action. The reason being, I actually really, really love the primer. It's one of those primers that almost is like Oh, like when I first picked it up, I was like, mm, I think you could skip it, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then the more you wear it, you realize like every single time you kind of use it, you just have this perfect foundation day and you realize it's the primer. However, it has coconut in it and it's really high up in the ingredients list and I'm super sensitive to coconut. And so it just gives me like, I can't even wear it once. It gives me like full blown acne breakouts. So I actually gave it to my mum, but I do love the primer. I'm just not willing to sacrifice my skin for it, unfortunately. The foundation as well as a side note, which we'll get to, does have coconut in it as well. But I think because by the time I've put my primer and everything on, it creates a barrier. I can actually wear it about one or two times before it causes me to have any breakouts. So I kept the foundation. And the other is a mascara. Again, I've tried both of the mascaras. Check out my playlist. Honestly, I have so much mascara in my collection and I try and only have two open Macs at a time because they go off so quickly that I couldn't justify picking up another one straight away when I went through them. And also, they're probably the thing that I would pick up almost last from her collection, if I'm honest. They're not a bad mascara in any way. They're just not super wowing to me over some others that are my favorites in my collection. So they're the two products that I don't have. I'm pretty certain I have everything else though. So at least from what she has, she doesn't have brows and stuff. Anyway, we're going to start off with eyes first. Also, don't mind this. This is the result of that NARS soft matte powder. That also has coconut in it, fun fact. And I can use it on my under eyes, but I dragged it down my T-zone the other day. And this is the result of coconut for me. So uh, yeah, don't mind that. I'm gonna use a combination of eyeshadow palettes today because I want to. I am going to use the Velvet Liaison palette from the Love Collection. This matte formula is just chef's kiss to me. It is hands down, in my opinion, her best matte formula out of her entire collection. So I basically use this Honestly, I use this nearly every day with all of my palettes, depending on which one I'm using. But especially when I use Pat, I always use this now with in conjunction with her motherships and stuff. I'm also going to use, I think, I think, unless I change my mind, I'm pretty sure I'm going to use Bronze Bliss. And then maybe, well, not maybe, I'll definitely also throw in a special shade or two from her collection as well. So we're just going to fill it out and see how we go. I have primed my lids already using my Rare Beauty Eye Primer, which is my favorite eye primer, if you are wondering. I will also have timestamps in case you only want to see certain things. And I will also link all of the products that I'm using in today's video down below in the description box. They are affiliate links. So if you shop through them, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. It just goes back into supporting my little channel here. The first thing we're gonna do is take the Pat McGrath Labs Intensify Stick. This is a holy grail from Pat McGrath Labs for me in particular. It's, it's dramatic how much of a difference this makes to my eyeshadow game. I guess it's kind of like a glitter eye primer, but I don't know. The things that I love about this is it does intensify the shadow a little bit. It is amazing for hooded eyes. It will, I use it with every single eyeshadow formula I own and it just stops any creasing on my lids and it also stops any fallout. So a lot of pats like special shades, for example, they have that kind of little glittery kind of fallout effect to them. And so using the intensify stick, I find it just stops any fallout on my face. So I honestly love the intensify stick. It's probably the pat product, even over eyeshadows, I recommend the most truly. That's how much I love it, I'm not even kidding. The shadow that I'm gonna dip into first is from Bronze Bliss. I'm gonna go into the silver. Really wanna show you guys how amazing this is. I'm gonna take this on my refer two. This shadow is like such an incredible 
like molten cream effect shadow. It is stunning. I recently did a video on my channel ranking my top 10 Pat McGrath Labs metallic only shades. And this was number one because it is like a cream metallic intensely blinding. This could be a special shade formula truly. If this was a special shade formula, I would have been just like absolutely blown away by it. And I hope that she continues this formula truly because it is just so good. I'm actually gonna take this all the way out to the outer corner today because YOLO. It's also the kind of shadow that like in low lighting is just gonna be oh, just crazy special. I do recommend some form of a glitter glue with this shadow though, even if it's not the intensify stick, just to minimize any potential fallout. Uh, but that's up to you, you know, just it's obviously dependent on your preferences as well. And I just like to press the shadow on like kind of tapping motions so that it's as pigmented as it kind of can be and also to minimize any fallout. I obviously do my eyes first, so fallout's not such a big deal, but I also would like to minimize it, you know, getting on my face or like my face as much as possible anyway. I feel like I've just talked about fallout this whole time. Apparently that's on my brain today. Oh, that shadow, seriously. Honestly, do the rest of your makeup and throw on some mascara and Bob's your uncle, especially like, I mean, depending on how you like your preferences, I have hooded eyes, so I like to add a little dimension through my crease, but if you're someone that likes just a metallic only, seriously, just throw this on, put some heavy mascara on and do the rest of your face and wow, like, Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up this What's Up Beauty R105 now and I am going to go into this shadow right here from Velvet Liaison. And I'm just gonna lightly buff this on the edge here. I'm starting out really small. I like to do my eye shape like this because I find it allows me to be a little bit more conservative. I find sometimes if I do my mattes first, I can get really carried away. You could obviously do your mattes first as well if you wanted to, if you find that easier. So I have buffed out that this shade right here through the crease. Now, it, my metallic shade has gone upward from that. So I don't mind that look because I kind of like that fairy dusting. But if you don't want that, do your mattes first for sure because then you can kind of control the metallic a little bit more. Now I'm just going to dip into the dark brown in this palette. This is a ref number 14. And I'm going to start just really lightly just tap this and wiggle it into the outer corner. I'm not going too far in though. Just a little bit, just to create a little bit of an almond oil effect, if you will. I'm gonna leave my mats here for now. And what I'm gonna go into now is actually Bronze Seduction. And I know you think I'm gonna go into this one because this is, that's my favorite special shade out of the whole collection. I have done a video ranking on my special shades. It's in my pack playlist if you're wondering. But I'm gonna actually dip into this one right here from Bronze Seduction because it has, it's like a white sparkly special shade with a shift of green. If you're new around here, green is one of my favorite eyeshadow colors. And I'm just picking this up on a flat brush and tapping it. And I haven't wet the brush or anything. I haven't put more intensifiers down because if I do either of those things, it's going to make this shadow more opaque. And I don't want that. I actually want it to be like a dusting of sparkles. Obviously you could skip this step if you don't want to do it. You could put any other special shade over the top. You know, Bob's your uncle. Look at that. I love it. I like it because the metallic, it's kind of like a messy look. So you could obviously make this a lot more structured if you wanted to, if that's your vibe. I like a kind of messy eye look. And so I am, especially when it's like glittery, I really like that. It looks crazy now though, because I don't have any other makeup on. So let's move on to base now, shall we? As I mentioned, I don't have the Pat McGrath Labs primer. So I'm just going to use a different one. I'm going to use the Rose Ink Tinted Serum today. I have the shade 040, which I know people use this as a foundation to me. This is just honestly a 
a primer to like even my skin tone and I will use the Tarte pore smoothing primer as well and then I will also use the Bobbi Brown color corrector on my under eyes so I'm gonna you know put this on you'll see the time lapse but I'm not gonna talk through it just to save some time Primer and everything is on. I also just put a little bit of the pat concealer on that breakout because this foundation is quite sheer. And so I have a feeling it's gonna need the coverage, but it's in that ugly stage where it's like really hard to cover. So, you know, I apologize, don't mind it. So this is the Pat McGrath Labs foundation. I have the shade Light 4. It's actually a really good shade match for me. When I first tried this particular foundation, I didn't really like it. I didn't appreciate it for what it was. And I also think that this is the kind of foundation that honestly you either love or you hate kind of thing. I don't think there's much of an in-between. I guess you could grow to appreciate it like I did, but it's definitely a light coverage foundation. It's really a foundation that to me, it always I've always kind of described it as like an off-duty model type foundation or a runway even type foundation. It is a light coverage. It's designed to make your skin look like skin, basically like you're wearing no foundation, at least that's my opinion and experience of it. So if you like a more medium to full coverage conceal uh, foundation, sorry, then I don't I don't think that you will really like this. I actually quite like it. I think it looks really, really lovely and lightweight on the skin. If this didn't have the coconut in it, I think this would be one of my holy grail foundations. I think I would have gone through multiple bottles in my time already because even though it is lightweight, you can like spot conceal obviously to build up the coverage in areas that you want and then I just find how lightweight it is on the skin like especially for like the daytime or harsh lighting and stuff it really looks super natural and flawless on the skin it's more of a natural finish I don't find it dewy I don't find it mattifying I think if you have super dry skin I'm not sure you might want to really hydrate your skin and if you have oily skin I, I think if you have oily skin you might be fine but yeah, I find it just straight kind of a natural finish, not too hydrating, not too do uh yeah, not too like dewy, sorry, not too matte. Let's move on to concealer now. I have the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer in the shade L4. Normally I have L4 and L2. L4 is gonna be too dark for me, just a heads up. I'm gonna show you what it looks like, but I will need to pop just a little bit of this um, Huda Beauty one on top to make it look okay with the rest of my thing, because look how dark that is. Normally I have to mix L2 and L4 together to create the perfect shade, but I'm out of L2 and Sephora was also out of L2, so I couldn't get it. So I was like, you know what? We'll just make do with the L4 and it'll be fine. I've gone through two bottles of the L2 shade and two bottles of the L4 shade uh, in the past two years. I tried the concealer for the first time, I'm pretty sure in 2021. And so I'm a big fan of this concealer. I actually think it is very, very lovely. This is the 109 from BK Beauty. It's really, really nice for more mature skin in particular or more mature under eyes, textured under eyes. Honestly, anyone can wear it though, but it's just very smoothing on the under eye, very long wearing. It goes on like a medium coverage, but I can assure you it layers so well. You can build it up to a full coverage if that's what you want, because it really does layer lovely. It's very long wearing. It's non-drying. I really think this is one of the best concealers on the market. The reason why I didn't instantly repurchase it once I went through them last year was because it is one of those concealers that tends to stick to its expiry date pretty solidly and its expiry date is like six months. And so for someone like me who has a lot of concealer in their collection, it's kind of a waste to have it if I'm not going to focus on constantly using it. And I had recently brought in a heap of other concealers into my collection that I was like, I want to get through some of these first. So I repurchased this shade though for this video. And honestly, when I used it, I 
I used it yesterday to re-familiarize myself with it and I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot how much I just absolutely adore this concealer. So once L2 comes back in stock or I pick something up off the Pat McGrath Labs website, I was like, I'm definitely restocking that shade too. I just added two extra dots of coverage from the Pat concealer. I just want to show you. It is a really, really good concealer. Honestly, you guys, I have a heap of videos talking about that concealer if you want to know more. But I just need to add a little dot of this Huda one just to brighten it, just a touch, because it is slightly too dark, unfortunately. So maybe I should have got L3, but I think it's the wrong undertone for me, and that's why I can't use L3. Anyway, this Huda one is quite similar, so it'll be fine. Miss Pat does not have any cream, bronzers, or contours yet. I really hope she releases them soon. I really do, because I would love a line of cream highlighters, cream bronzers, and cream blushes from her. So we're going to go ahead and powder. So this is the Sublime Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. I've gone through two or three of these in my time. This is the shade Light. Again, I just repurchased this for this video. I'm just taking this on a 787 from Delium Tools, just a really small little brush here, and I'll just set my under eye. Uh, I didn't repurchase this and I probably wouldn't have, although no, I would have because I like having most of Pat's products in my collection for videos and reviews, but I'll be honest, it's not my favorite powder. It used to be back in the day when my skin was proper oily. My skin now has transitioned more to combo virgin on normal depending on what's going on with it. And so this powder just for me with my current skin state is a little bit too drying, especially I have really dry under eyes, no matter how oily the rest of my face is or whatever is going on, like my under eyes are always like super dry. And so because of that, this is just a little bit too drying for me. I prefer the Westman Atelier Vital Press Powder, which I know she says isn't for under eyes, but I just find it works really well for mine, or the Laura Mercier Secret Under Eye Blurring Powder, because I find that does the same thing as this, but it's a little less drying. So yeah, but I do think if you don't have that issue with like having incredibly dry under eyes, like if you just have normal ones or oily ones, this powder is actually phenomenal and it really does blur and it will like keep your oils at bay for quite some time. And it's just really lightweight on the skin as well. For the rest of the face, I actually have the exact same powder, but in medium. So I'm just going to take a BK 104. She does have a loose powder, but I've never heard good reviews about it. And uh, I think it had coconut in it, which is why I never picked it up. So we'll just use this one. Plus, I like the blurring effect of this one. I don't think I would recommend necessarily picking this up for your entire face just because you will go through this amount of product quite quickly if you use it like every day, but it is nice if you are, you know, open to it. So that is the face all set. I just quickly went off camera and did my brows. Let's finish up the eyes and then we'll move on to the rest of the face. So I have a black little uh, Pat McGrath Arts. Pat, Pat McGrath Labs, sorry, eyeliner here. So I'm going to tight line with it first. And then I am just going to put a little bit on the outer corner lash line here and just smudge it out just a touch. I'm just flicking up. I'm not doing a wing or anything. I just want to smudge that out just a little bit. I'm just going to take my LH Cosmetics Grayish Core Crayon for my lower waterline. So I will do that and come back. I'm just going to take a pencil brush and dip back into that middle matte shade from Velvet Liaison. And I'll just run that lightly. I'm just going to dip into the uh, champagne shade right here from Bronze Bliss for the inner corner. I'll just go off camera and put my Victoria Beckham mascara on and then we'll move on to bronzer and everything. Eyes are done. I really like them. I really do. I think they look stunning. So now we're going to use the new Pat McGrath Labs bronzer. I've already got like an initial first impressions of this bronzer on my channel from last week doing like a try new makeup, but I have used this quite a few times since and gosh, I love it. I really do. This is a BK 103. Did I tell you I have the shade Nude Honey? Oh my gosh, this is... She nailed it. She really nailed it. My goodness, is this not just a blurring, smoothing, impeccable formula? It is seamless on the skin. Like, wow. Wow, it is so natural. Like, look at just how 
effortless and seamless this is. Normally I would always use a cream bronzer as well and honestly I do, I just didn't want to today because I didn't want to take away from the product given that it wouldn't have been a Pat McGrath Labs product, but I always do. I like to layer cream to powder products, but this bronzer still looks absolutely beautiful without, you know, a cream to enhance it underneath. It's just, look at it. It is so natural, so beautiful. I'm not just saying that because I love Pat. You know, there are other products from her that I have criticized. I'm pretty honest, I don't really, she's my favorite brand, but I'm also not tied to the brand in any way. So if I don't like something, I'll tell you. But this is darn good. Like, I think this is going to be... I, I think this might even pip my house labs bronzer. Honestly, it's just beautiful. Look how seamless it is. Like, I don't know how this picked up on camera, but in real life, it is so natural and seamless, truly. It's the most perfect finish where it's not too shimmery and not too matte. It is just beautiful, truly. I really, really want Pat to come out with a liquid highlight. I know she has those stick highlights. I don't know if she still has them, but I know she used to. But I really want like a proper ethereal Lisa Eldridge type liquid highlighter from her. But until then, I have two highlighters. I have this Divine Rose one, which I don't know if you can actually get this on her website anymore, but I know it's still on Sephora Australia. And this is like a baked type highlighter formula and it's impeccable. And if you've had your eye on it and you can find it, I do really, really recommend it. Truly, it's so lovely. And then you can't actually get this shade anymore, I'm pretty certain, which is a shame because this is an awesome shade. But you can get this formula still on her website in other shades. Um, and this is the Skin Fetish Divine Glow Highlighter. Mine's in Golden Nectar. And I think, I don't know if you know if you can just tell how much I've used of this. Like, this is a powder highlight. So, like, to actually use a lot of it is saying something. I have a lot of highlights. And this one has, like, an actual divot in it. Like, I love it. I'm going to take just a fluffy tapered brush. This is just from BH Cosmetics. And just, you know, pick some of the product up. You can build this up to be super blinding or really quite natural. Like, look at it. Oh, it is gorgeous, truly. It's such a lovely highlight. It's one of my favorite highlighter formulas. Both her powder ones, to be honest. They're just beautiful. Look at that. Stunning. No one does a highlighter like Pat, truly. They're, they're really a good quality highlight. Pat also has quite a few blushes. I have nearly every shade. My absolute favorite out of her powder blush formula is this one, Paradise Plus. Paradise Glow, the duo, this is like the most perfect sunburnt color, especially if you're coming into summer and you don't have this, do yourself a favor because it is perfect for summer. The formula I think I'm actually going to use today though is the baked one out of the, this was the um, Blushing Delights palette from the Bridgerton 2 collection and I just depotted them and put them in here. I need her to come out with this formula in singles. Uh, I think I'm going to dip into, actually, I think I might... Mm, no, I'm going to go into a little bit of this one. I just want something like a little bit more of a satin sheen to it kind of thing uh, because my skin is looking a little bit just flat without any cream products I'm finding. This is a Smashbox Buildable Cheek Brush. I like, I really like this formula and I know a lot of you in America have seen it in like TK Maxx or TJ Maxx or whatever it is. So if you find it cheap, I recommend it. You can either just keep it in the hideous packaging it comes in or depot it like I did. And it's it's such a lovely, lovely blush formula. I really hope she brings these out in um, singles. I think she will. That is like all of the face products that I have from her. I am going to set my face with some setting spray. Just need to bring a little bit of hydration back into it. Uh, this is just the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip. She doesn't have a setting spray and I really wish that she would bring one out too. So I'm just going to spray my sponge and pat it in. Apparently, as a side note, Lisa Eldridge is bringing out a setting spray in May. So that's exciting. I just find, by the way, doing my setting spray like this, it melts all of the powder products into the skin and makes them less kind of like powdery looking like like it actually makes it almost look like they're cream products on the skin the reason why i don't just spray my face is because if my skin i find is like being super it's like extra textured for the day because sometimes like today it is i don't actually want to spray it through my t-zone i actually want my t-zone to kind of remain that flat type look but i want the rest of my face to be more hydrated and so that's why i like to use the sponge and also the sponge with the setting spray really pushes 
the products in and melts them into the skin but it's obviously up to you I'd say the drier your skin is the more you actually probably just want to like douse your whole face so I also get that we just have lips left so let's uh let's do them shall we I actually have quite a few Pamukkas Labs lip products I used to have a lot more but I did declutter a few or used a few up because I either didn't like the shades wasn't going to use them whatever um I don't have any of her lip glosses or lip balms anymore because I really actually just didn't like that formula at all I know a lot of people love her glosses I just found it too sticky and heavy for me personally but I do have three of the satin allures which is my favorite formula from her hands down like all time favorite formula I have uh, a few of her I have two of her blitz trance and one of her matte trance and I have this one which I actually I think is another matte tr trance so I'm just gonna quickly swatch them for you so I can just show you the shades these are all of the lip products that I own from Pat Swatch so this one right here is Elson 2 which is a matte trance Omi which is a matte trance Blood Rush which is a blitz trance Lady Stardust Stardust sorry blitz trance uh, Nude Romantic 2 Satin Allure which is my favorite shade Veiled Rose Satin Allure, Negligee Satin Allure, and then these are my lip liners. So the first one here is Starstruck, the middle one is Divine Rose, and the top one is Contour. And the top contour one is my all-time favorite. I picked up Starstruck and Divine Rose, not fully realizing they were so similar to each other, but that's okay. I really love her lipsticks. I think they're a great formula. Me personally, my preference is the Satin Allures. I like a really, I like a satin finish. I like it to be fuss-free, a little bit less opaque. I mean, they are quite opaque, but they're just slightly less than these ones. I find Lady Stardust, the match, the Blitz Trans formula is beautiful. Actually, Lady Stardust, I just absolutely adore. And then Elson 2 is actually my favorite red I own. But these two are just like, they're so intensely opaque. They're very long lasting, but you just need to be mindful how you apply them. I like to be able to just casually put my lip products on, but when I use those two, I have to really focus. So anyway, they're my, uh, they're my lip products. So we're gonna go to my good old faithful. So this is the contour lip liner. And this is actually one of my favorite lip liners out of my entire collection. I adore this shade. It's like the perfect nude lip liner. See how like perfect and nude that is? And then let's do Nude Romantic too. Like, is that not the most perfect lip combo? Like it's such a perfect juicy nude lip. I just love it. All right, let me go and do my hair and everything and then we'll zoom out and see the finished look. Alrighty, and this is the finished look of a full face of Pat McGrath Labs. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I have been really deep diving back into my Pat McGrath Labs collection because I've been missing it. I sometimes feel like I do too much Pat content and so I take like a break and then I kind of like just go head first into the content again because I miss it so much and I just love the brand but yeah I really like how this look has turned out personally I hope you guys enjoyed it as well and let me know what other kind of pat videos you want from me if you want some more there is a new ranking coming don't you worry I've added so many pat palettes to my collection that I absolutely have to do a new ranking so there's one coming um, but yeah let me know if you want to see anything else in particular and I hope you enjoyed the video let me know your favorite Pat McGrath Labs product down below if you love the brand as much as me or if you're looking to try her let me know what you have your eye on and uh, if you're watching till this point you're an absolute legend I appreciate you so so much if you haven't already pretty please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe and I just hope that you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world and I will see you next time Bye.